Hello everybody and welcome to the next in the series of HLTCO YouTube videos. Last week the video that I recorded uh, focused specifically on Ipswich Town and their run towards promotion from League One under the guidance of Kieran McKenna. Uh, today I have chosen to focus on Plymouth Argyle or Argyle as their fans have been uh, painstakingly pointing out to me uh, they like to be referred to because they find themselves at the top of the League One table with two games to go. Five points clear of third place Sheffield Wednesday uh, with six points still up for grabs. And, you know, really on something of a fairy tale story in the League One campaign. I got a little bit of pushback from Plymouth fans when I decided to record the video on Ipswich because from their perspective, the Tractor Boys have had a budget that has been far superior to that of Argyle. And with that in mind, they felt as though their football club deserved a little bit of spotlight. So that is why, primarily, I chose to actually focus on Argyle uh, for this video today. But having delved a little bit more deeply into the story behind their campaign, with Stephen Schumacher in charge and the football that they have played, I think it is a story that will, I suppose, be interesting to everybody, whether they are an Argyle fan or whether they're just a neutral who happens to have stumbled upon this. It's worth pointing out first and foremost that before a ball was kicked this season, uh, they found themselves, I think, 12 favourites to be promoted at 25 to 1. So as much as they do find themselves on top of the pile with two games left to play. This was by far something that was preordained. You know, it wasn't something that anyone expected Plymouth to be able to do, but the tide of momentum they've been able to build up across the last seven or eight months uh, really has built up ahead of steam. And, you know, they are, as many of their fans have pointed out to me this week, uh, the biggest city in the UK, if not in Europe, I'm not 100% sure on that fact, but definitely in the UK, to have never had a top flight football team representing them. So quite clearly, uh, this is a passion thing for thousands upon thousands of Plymouth Argyle fans. And hopefully, from their perspective, uh, they can get over the line with Stephen Schumacher in charge between now and the end of the campaign and be playing championship football by the time uh, the 20 23-24 season kicks off. When looking to examine the style of play that Stephen Schumacher has tried to cultivate with Plymouth Argyle, I think you know this is always going to be par for the course really, but speaking to uh, Argyle supporters, you have had uh, numerous different sort of formations that have been put forward, but the most frequent one that has been highlighted to me is a 3-4-3 three, three, uh, with overlapping fullbacks and two number 10s, all of whom in attacking transitions tend to interchange uh, and wreak havoc really for opposition defences. Uh, you know, I spoke last week on the Ipswich video about the fact that Ipswich have a high possession style of football and how that has confounded so many League One defences. But quite clearly, uh, Plymouth have looked to get the best out of the squad at their disposal. And with those two overlapping fullbacks and those interchangeable number 10s, those quick transitions into the attacking third have really helped them to be you know, a potent attacking force throughout games, but particularly in the latter stages of fixtures. And one of the main themes when speaking to Plymouth of fans in preparation for this video has been a focus on how many late goals they scored, how many they get off the bench and how they are able to stay in these fixtures with a real sense of belief that they can get at least a draw if not free from losing positions and quite clearly having that formation with the fullbacks that bomb on, with the number 10s that will move into the channels or they will stay central whilst the wide men get forward it does cause all sorts of problems for opposition defences and it has led to Plymouth being a team that every Everyone in the division really takes seriously from week to week. The theme that has continued to crop up in conversations with Argyle fans in preparation for this particular video is the in-game management that Stephen Schumacher has cultivated really throughout his time as boss. Uh, they have come from behind on seven occasions to win games this season as far as I can see, uh, which is the highest in the division by far. And the Argyle fans seem to believe that Stephen Schumacher is undeniably the best in-game manager in League One, if not in the entire EFL structure. Of course, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder we have to accept that they are on a tidal wave of momentum at the moment and with that in mind Plymouth fans will have this huge amount of positivity towards Stephen Schumacher and what the Argyle team have been able to do at the head of the division uh, but you do not come from behind on seven occasions to win a game if you haven't got it in the locker from a tactical perspective and you know it's something that I'm going to get onto in a latter point in this video but the bench and overall squad at Plymouth Argyle really has played a full part in this promotion push. It is far from a situation where you've got 11 or 12 players that are guaranteed to start every week and that collective spirit has really
really uh, come to fruition under Steven Schumacher because if you are a manager that is changing things on a regular basis throughout games, whether you are 1-0 up, whether you are 1-0 down, whether the scores are a deadlock and you've got 20 minutes to go, when you do get results from behind or when you are pushing for a winner late on and it comes to fruition, uh, then the confidence that the fans have in you as a coach and the confidence your players will have in you going forward in the latter stages of a campaign uh, will really all come to a uh, head. And you will find yourselves, as Argyle are right now, uh, right at the end of a season and, and believing that they can get that final push over the line and getting up into the championship. And if that in-game management is something that continues in the championship next season, then I think there's every Every chance uh, that Plymouth Argyle could be well clear of the relegation zone uh, by the time the new campaign comes to an end. Albeit that sounds a little bit as though I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, but the glowing terms with which Plymouth fans speak about Steven Sch Schumacher uh, really does make it feel to me as though he will be a manager that has their best interests at heart in the long term. I think it's fair to say that prior to recording that video on Ipswich Town last week, I was unaware of the animosity that exists uh, between Plymouth Argyle's fans and Ipswich's over the exact path that they have taken to the summit of the League One table. You throw Sheffield Wednesday in there as well in third place, obviously a huge club in the entire history of the English game. And it really does feel as though financially Plymouth Argyle will see themselves as something of an outlier in comparison to their two more illustrious uh, rivals for this League One promotion push. Uh, and, you know, I saw plenty of comments from Ipswich fans sort of talking down the attitude of Plymouth fans. I saw plenty of Plymouth fans coming back at me and saying, can't you shine a spotlight on us? And I wasn't really able to get my head across it in the moment, but having spent a few days researching it, I can understand why Plymouth fans were so keen uh, to have a video like this recorded, because they feel as though Stephen Schumacher is somewhat turning water into wine in terms of the squad that he's got, the financial constraints that he's working under in comparison to those two clubs I've just mentioned, and the fact that they find themselves with two games to go at the top of the table. And I think you throw in his tactical nous, you throw in those in-game changes, and you look at the money spent, and quite clearly, there is this suggestion from Plymouth fans that Stephen Schumacher is the outstanding coach in the division. Not just because they've come from behind in games, but because he is making this squad outperform itself week after week. They have utilised the loan market very well. They haven't spent anywhere near the same amount as Ipswich have. Albeit, you know, it's something I covered on the video on Ipswich last week. If you actually look at the net spend of Ipswich Town, it isn't that great at all. But either way, uh, Plymouth are not a club that can splash the cash in the same fashion and yet with two games to go uh, they find themselves leading the race in League One so I just wanted to highlight that point in the middle of the video I didn't necessarily get it but then part of the reason for me recording these YouTube videos every other week or so is so that I myself can gain a greater understanding of football clubs that I otherwise wouldn't you know I am an unashamed football anorak as much as obviously uh, the lion's share of my work in terms of the podcast and Twitter output focuses on the Premier League given Crystal Palace's place within it and the general interest I am also very keen to delve into different stories and I feel as though this last couple of weeks has really opened my eyes as to the direct dynamics between Plymouth, Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday as well even though they find themselves in third as things stand. There is a feeling amongst certain sections of the Plymouth Argyle fan base that in an ideal world, Stephen Schumacher would favour a more possession-based style of play where they do dominate the ball, have 65-70% to 70 of possession week after week, very similar uh, to Ipswich Town, of course, who do that under Kieran McKenna. But in actual fact, if you look at the lion's share of their points and the way that they have come from behind uh, so often this season, they are very, very good in transitions, breaking at pace with those two overlapping fullbacks and the two tens who move into the channels as I mentioned at the start of the video to really exploit the spaces and gaps uh, that are created by their opposition from week to week and there are you know a million different ways to win a game of football it is a cliche but it is also a fact and I think quite clearly uh, Stephen Schumacher has shown himself to be tactically adept enough to not stick to one specific way of playing and the pace and directness of those counter-attacks from Plymouth have really paid dividends for them throughout this season you know they aren't necessarily a 
team that dominate the ball, but when you do give them the opportunity to get forward, I think they strike the fear of God into anyone that comes up against them, not just because they have goal scorers in the team, but because of the collective spirit that Steven Schumacher has fostered. And that in itself is something which often gets underplayed, whether it's by your neutrals, whether it's by rival fans. If you get everyone at a football club pulling in the same direction, it can be incredibly powerful. You know, it is... Once again, it's another cliche, but you do become greater than the sum of your parts. And I think if you're going to look at any team in the Football League this season who can actually uh, epitomise that the most, I think Plymouth Argyle have to be up there in consideration for the biggest uh, turnaround, really, in terms of their expectations pre-season and where they find themselves with two games to go in the campaign. To tack on another point in relation to those transitions and breaking forward at pace, uh, Stephen Schumacher, according to numerous fans that I have spoken to over the last few days, really does favour a scenario where teams that he is in charge of will continue to push forward for an equaliser or a winning goal. And on a couple of occasions, it has led to relatively heavy defeats for Argyle, uh, but it's quite clearly something that he is keen to continue with. I don't think he is ever going to be a safe the first manager he wants to put teams under pressure he wants to make sure that if there is the opportunity to score goals they will and when you are playing with that natural free for all free having the two overlapping wide men uh, it will create situations where you can have overloads in the final third as I say it may well from some Plymouth Argyle fans views uh, mean that they've flown a little bit too close to the sun on occasion and had their wings burnt but I think in the overall picture Stephen Schumacher would rather have an Argyle team that goes for it for 90 minutes rather than just accepting defeat or sticking at 0-0 and 1-1 of course pragmatism might have to come into his thinking if they do get into the championship and they're even more overmatched from week to week with the opposition they're going up against uh, but that transition from the third tier into the second will certainly be an interesting one not just from an Argyle fan's point Point of view but also if you are a neutral who has you know a genuine interest in Plymouth and I, I think that will be uh, very much me going into the new campaign uh, because what I am seeing from every single Argyle fan I've spoken to in relation to Stephen Schumacher's coaching pathway is someone who has got a very very bright future uh, within the game uh, from the dugout. It would be foolish of me to not mention the incredible home form that Argyle have had all the way through this season. It really has been the bedrock of their promotion push. They have had 19 wins, one draw, two defeats, 43 goals scored and 16 conceded across the season so far, which is all made up to a total that is seven points greater in terms of home record uh, than both Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday. And of course, you want to rely on your home form. It always is uh, something that you have to rely on incredibly heavily if you want to be promoted. But I think there is a certain angle to take here when you look at Argyle, you look at their place within the country, how difficult it is to access if you're coming from up north. And that sense of collective spirit that can be fostered when people uh, get onto a good thing down there. You know, it has been a relatively central theme of this video, but I think it should be uh, given their geographical place within the UK. They do see themselves as a sort of downtrodden area. You know, they want to have to, you know, the same level of, of praise and recognition that your Ipswiches and your Sheffield Wednesdays are being showered with week after week. And maybe they are a little bit forgotten down there, but the, I suppose, yin and yang of that is that when you do get a manager like Steven Schumacher that buys into the club and gets them on this sort of runaway train of momentum, it can lead to a situation where their home form can produce results like that. Uh, when you are scoring the number of goals that Argyle are, when you do have that confidence on home turf, it can only lead to good things. And, and very similarly, you know, you look towards the championship next season as it's likely to be in their future uh, and they can hopefully galvanise that fan base once again. Because if you do get an ownership model and it's something I'm going to come on to in a little bit more detail in a moment that he's fully in tune uh, with the management staff it can be a very potent mix uh, you know it, it's something that I suppose recording these YouTube videos week after week I could get a little bit pigeonholed for but I honestly do believe that people overlook how important the overall feel of a football club is of course the players that you have the budget that you have for wages and transfers these things are important but primarily you 
still need everybody on the same page. And at Plymouth Argyle at the moment, it certainly does feel as it is, you know, a situation where everybody is pulling in the same direction. And that home record mixed with the numbers that they are getting in terms of attendances from week to week has really contributed towards that. And I do think their geographical place within the UK has played a huge role in those Plymouth fans really getting behind the team and buying into what Steven Schumacher wants from them from week to week. I alluded to it earlier in the video, but one of the key cornerstones of Plymouth's season so far under Steven Schumacher has been the rotational aspect to his team. It is very much a focus on the collective rather than the individual. You don't have star men, you don't have big money players coming into the football club, and only three players have started 35 games this season, which is a squad-wide high, and I think that really does highlight the rotational nature of it. Of course, you do wonder that he might tinker a little bit too much, and whether or not you could you know mess with the momentum or the cohesiveness it is something to take into account but I think in this particular scenario it has worked in Steven Schumacher and Argyle's favour because you have a squad of players that feel truly bonded and truly together everyone is willing to play their part everyone knows that there isn't a big ego or someone that has more sway than anyone else over the management staff and it has led to a situation where late in games they have players coming off the bench who don't just feel like bit parts who don't just feel like an afterthought they feel like a very active and important member of the squad and that in itself is something that once again surely every manager in the game would love to cultivate it is easier said than done but I think it's credit to Stephen Schumacher and his coaches that quite clearly they have been able to from a man management perspective aside from the tactical tweaks they've looked to make really build this sense of momentum amongst the squad so that no one feels downtrodden or forgotten that everyone feels they have an active part to play and with two games left to go you would expect them to get over the line probably with contributions once again off the bench rather than just relying on that starting 11 in the final two fixtures. Of course, any manager who has a team top of whichever division they are participating in will likely have the supporters of that club eating out of the palm of their hand. But I think it is important to highlight that in Steven Schumacher, uh, you have an individual that has really won favour amongst the Argyle fan base. It is key to point out at this stage, I feel, that he arrived with Ryan Lowe, who of course has now departed from uh, the South Coast to take over at Preston North End. Uh, when those two first arrived with Argyle, it was well known within the uh, Argyle fan base that Ryan Lowe only rented his accommodation where Stephen Schumacher decided to buy a property and move his entire family down with him. And whilst that isn't necessarily the be-all and end-all of success that a coaching staff member or manager is going to have, I think it really did highlight that he was fully bought in to the area itself, to the football club and to the project that he was undertaking. And of course, Ryan Lowe left for Plymouth, uh, sorry, left for Preston. We saw Stephen Schumacher uh, stay put with Argyle uh, and he stays there too. To this day they are top of the League One table and flying uh, and that level of faith that he showed in them is now being repaid in terms of their results and the momentum that they have built and I think with that in mind he can go hopefully touch wood into a championship season where everyone is on the same page and everyone feels as though he has the best interest of the club at heart. Of course, it is always difficult. We have seen reports in the last week or two linking Vincent Company, the Burnley manager, uh, with roles away from the Clarets, even though he has just won promotion to the Premier League with them. And that will always be the case. It is likely to be the case with Steven Schumacher if indeed Plymouth Argyle will make it out of the third tier and into the Championship should jobs become available over the summer. But I think everything that I have read and listen to in relation to Argyle fans and their view of him suggests that he will want to continue along this path because of the way that the club is, because of how bonded that you know entire unit is as a squad and I think he will want to give it his best shot in the second tier with them given that tidal wave of, of fan momentum that they have built over the last nine or ten months together. Alongside the obviously fantastic job that Stephen Schumacher has done in charge of Plymouth Argyle, you have to throw in the contribution of Simon Hallett, the club's chairman who has been there since November of 2019. His story is one that I was completely unaware of before starting to research this video. Uh, he has had a very illustrious and varied career going from Plymouth to Oxford University, then to Hong Kong and then over to the US, but he understands 
completely what Plymouth Argyle means to that area and he has come in and is already on record as saying that he is having the time of his life uh, in charge of Plymouth Argyle. He said that he has had numerous different business ventures throughout a very uh, long career but nothing in which he has had as much enjoyment as he is currently and I think he alongside Stephen Schumacher is really just there for the ride at the moment. He is very much bought into the local area. He understands what it means to the supporters from week to week. He has got local charities involved. He is very active in terms of speaking to the fan base on a regular basis. And all of these things, you know, you often hear it, don't you? Death by a thousand cuts. I feel as though you can have the opposite effect as well if you do put tiny little things into action that overall become far bigger than themselves. You know, I look at managers and coaches up and down the football league if they have an apathetic view of things if they don't buy into the area if they don't buy into the culture of a place it will eventually fall down because you need to feel as though those representing you whether they are stepping across the white line to play for your club whether they are managing or whether they are in the boardroom you need to feel as though there is a synergy between those three things and quite clearly with Simon Hallett at the head of Plymouth Argyle with Stephen Schumacher in the dugout and with this group of committed players that have no egos and no real star man you have the most potent mix possible which has seen them go from 12 favourites at 25 to 1 to win promotion uh, to sitting on top of the table with two games left uh, and there is one final point that I just want to make before I sign off for this video. Perhaps the perfect embodiment of the commitment that Simon Hallett has to Plymouth Argyle and the area comes in their shirt sponsor. I say sponsor, it's not actually a sponsor. This season, uh, Project 35, it is a charity initiative that has been dreamt up by Plymouth Argyle in association with Ginsters and it aims to cut child poverty within the area significantly. The 35 in Project 35 denotes the percentage of children who are reported to be living in poverty uh, and it looks to actually bring them financial mobility put more food on the table for them and make sure that the area of Plymouth is better served than it was prior to this initiative and I think it is a fantastic thing that Simon Hallett and Plymouth are doing you know you look at it overall you've got a guy here 34 year old guy in South London recording a YouTube video that in researching this particular uh, project has stumbled across this and that is the prime aim I suppose alongside the tangible differences they can make by you know producing more food for kids that need it to get more people talking about it to raise awareness and that is why I look towards Plymouth at the moment and you know I'll be completely honest I saw their league form I saw that Stephen Schumacher was doing a good job and I thought oh there's an interesting project to look at and, and do a video on but having delved deeper into the overall roots behind the scenes at home park across the last 10 or 12 months it's quite clear that this is a football club who are very much pulling in the same direction and I think it's a fantastic story it's one which deserves a spotlight and hopefully having watched this you feel as though you've got a better understanding of why Plymouth fans feel so so passionate about their club being given a moment in the sun you know it's very very easy from a content creation perspective to focus on your Ipswiches your Sheffield Wednesdays your Premier League clubs but Plymouth are a potential sleeping giant you know, they may be situated down there in, you know, the south coast, sort of out of the way and, and not necessarily someone who is going to, you know, be front and centre of anyone's mind when it comes to the football landscape. But if they can continue this momentum they have built this season into the championship next term, then who knows? You know, it, once again, I will circle back to it. They have never had a top flight team represent them in that part of the country. What a fantastic story it would be if Stephen Schumacher can continue this sense of momentum across the next 12, 24, maybe even 36 months and take them towards the top end of the championship as well. Uh, it's certainly a story that I am going to be keeping a closer eye on than I would have done uh, prior to deciding that I was going to record this video for you today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do uh, give the video a like. Please do consider uh, clicking subscribe on this channel because every single person makes a massive difference to me. It is still in the infancy. You know, I only started this YouTube channel in January. I've already made it to over 10,000 subscribers which I am incredibly uh, grateful for it's a, it's a mad number really when you consider this is only the eighth video on the channel 
but I am hoping that I will continue to upload once a week or so all the way through the summer and, and ongoing really for the next however many years uh, as long as everyone wants to continue to see me make this sort of content so as I say if you have enjoyed it please do like and please do consider leaving a comment as well because I'd love to hear your thoughts on this entire Plymouth project because I just think it's it's fantastic it's awe inspiring and I hope for one uh, that they manage to make it into the championship alongside Ipswich and potentially even Sheffield Wednesday as well even though they find themselves uh, sat in the playoff places as things currently stand. So I will leave it there for today and look forward to speaking to you again soon. Bye for now.